adaptation of John Christopher's science fiction trilogy, the seventh episode of which was shown on Saturday. The tripods are three-legged metal monsters which run the world a hundred years from now by means of capping. On reaching puberty, humans are drawn up into the tripod's green belly and then fitted with a cap which controls them. In yesterday's episode, after watching a tourney of jousting, archery and so on, Eloise, said to be a French aristocrat, is hauled up into the monster's undercarriage to the distress of her fiancé, the humble, uncapped Will. Brian Aldis, how many marks do you give to the tripods? It's a rather clumsy bit of engineering. It can only see in one direction. It has no infrared. It doesn't have any armaments. It's a very Pacific creature. And there's a, a, a strange mixture of sexual symbolism in that bit we saw. I would have liked to have seen the princess actually stuffed through the hole, but perhaps that's just me. I feel it rather <laughs> lacks drama all told. I mean, here. Lo and behold, it's good old 2089 AD again, and civilization has progressed to the point where it looks remarkably like a Hovis commercial, where the miller grinds his corn once more, the, the yokels wear their smocks, women are into home baking, the best china's always on the table, the squire's in his castle, if you can believe that. There are lots of fates by the village pond, and there in the pond is your friendly neighborhood tripod who makes you think what it wants to think rather than what you want to think. So the whole thing could be regarded as a kind of allegory on some kind of puberty right in a technological uh, civilization. But I don't think it works like that. I, I mean, there was a mention early on of a girl at the school who was rather good at painting, painted some beautiful pictures. After she'd been capped, no more, just a conformist. And this seems to me to be a... Um, Touch of a, 1984, a, really. Well, yes, but it sets up a false dichotomy. You know, we've all learnt to live with uh, technology and be creative. What I don't like about it is I think it's an example of one kind of British science fiction where you look backwards and not forwards. Andrew Knight. seems to me the uh, interesting thing about this was when it was shown. It's shown at... 20 past five and therefore I assume it's mostly for children it isn't is it meant to be judged entirely as science fiction uh, as it might be shown later in the evening it is uh, for children uh, and certainly my children regarded it when I asked uh, my little daughter uh, what she felt about it how and old I, was she she was uh, nearly eight and I I didn't think much of it to begin with and watched it and I said well what do you think of it Amarillis and she said well um, I like it because it's a good adventure story. Um, and seen like that, I thought that was quite interesting. And it also does have a moral. And that's what his author said, I think. The moral <laughs> is, it seems to me anyway, whether it seems like that yeah. to the children, I don't know. But the moral is, is life better when it's idyllic uh, but conformist? Or is it better when there is less idyll, uh, when you live in the bad old world, uh, but you don't conform? Angela. Well, I thought the titles were exceptionally good, very well designed, very exciting. After that disappointment the whole way, just pure Valium land. I've never seen anything so sleepy and so slow. 
that's adventure. It certainly hasn't won me over to science fiction. Two th I didn't understand much of it. Two things that really puzzled me is why all the people who were meant to be French hadn't had lessons from John Wells on how to speak the French accent, because some of them had Cockney accents, which doesn't really matter, but it isn't very convincing. Um, secondly, a tremendous missed opportunity in the clothes, which are meant to be in a hundred years' time. It seemed to me they were about sort of circa I, I, 1978. I, th I, th I thought, yes, I thought the clothes are meant to be sort of medieval times. Oh, I, thought, I see. I thought that that was the... Didn't you understand that, Brian? Very confusing. No, I didn't understand that. I thought that they'd had a very easy time in the costume department and that uh, one of the women wearing a, uh, uh, a smock was wearing a hat just that my mother used to wear in 1952. A sort of medieval uh, bath caps. Actually. Yes, well, I thought the, well, the, the, well, the, the, the tripods had, had decided that this is the, that it was to be that kind of setup. The oh, people that was were going to wear. Confusion that I suffered. Yeah, they, well, you missed <laughs> that. I think, I think that's the, the the whole point. Yeah, is that uh, had it been put on later, it lacks professionalism at every single turn. I entirely yeah. agree with and that. And that's vitality. Uh, I mean, play school was But, much but that that's what's interesting about it is that it it lacks any sort of verisimilitude. The French is uh, extricable. Yeah. Uh, the clothes are a nonsense. Uh, everything about it is is slightly silly, so you but in fact, but it works. I suspect for the age group that it has been done yes. for. I, I, w I would guess that it probably won't have. You see that when the uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks and all that came on, that was as much watched by adults as it was by yes. children. Mm -hmm. But although it was originally for children, I, I, w I would think none of you, from the way you're saying, will think that this will take off in the way that uh, Doctor Who did. I, I think that the Radio Times promotion suggested it wasn't only for children. But my daughter Charlotte, age mm -hmm. 15, watched and said very silly daddy uh, so it wasn't for her age group either well it uh, hadn't got the clout of doctor yeah. who doctor who had a lot of humor in it you see the express said the most compelling imaginative tea time adventure story in years and the telegraph said thoroughly workmanlike and convincing so it's well, obviously something which is going to uh, split people it's pretty isn't it really? well the, the, yes it's nicely photographed and i think mm. the betrothal party in last night's episode actually gets a prize for being the worst ever bbc party which is under guested. I mean, there were about three people and one pork pie yes. and two bottles of water. It was a really low-budget party yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. We'll go on now to the six o'clock news, edited by Ron Neal, the successful first editor.